think candlesticks one of these things. It's when I started as a very uh, a young uh, man and a trader, it was all about bell curves and market profile. And it's just interesting what stands the test of time. You know, candlesticks one of these things that they depict the market in a, a graphical way, an easy to understand way. And I think a lot of people kind of get sucked into this idea that technical analysis means that you need to know everything about trading. You don't. Um, there is a finite amount of information the human brain can take and uh, uh, trust me, you know, I've tried to pack as much into my small brain as I can but there's only so much that any one person can understand. And I think with candlesticks is it really gives us a broad measure and a broad idea of what is potentially potentially is the key uh, achievable in the markets and that is with uh, you know candlestick size individual candlestick patterns clusters groups of, uh, of candlesticks that, and that, you know again there's better people than me um, to, be honest, you know, to, to, to describe these things and you know Steve Neeson's book on uh, on candlesticks is is the kind of the holy grail of, uh, of candlesticks but having read it there's a lot that can be stripped out at the end of the day as I always keep saying I'm fairly brutal about these things I don't care about being right I want the money. I want the money. So uh, the things that I bring through from candlesticks and, and the interpretations I get is really as confirming indicators. Uh, the markets are very complex right now and uh, it's, it's mainly the fundamentals and politics that are driving it. But markets will always adhere to the technicals and I view all my, uh, my, my charts in candlesticks and no other way. So it, it is an absolute part of building up your technical picture, but it's picking out what's right for you. Like all things with the trading and technical analysis, it's picking things that are relevant to you. So I'll crack on with the presentation. This is a presentation I wrote a long time ago, so I'm going to go through an oldie but a goodie, and I'm going to go through it at a thorough pace because you know I don't want to kind of insult people's intelligence. But then what I'll do is I'll relay these things into live markets, and then we can pick it up because a lot of people when they're presenting, it's all perfect scenarios, you know, very kind of you know convenient ways of displaying things. As you know, I've presented with Simon for for, for many many years, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm a no kind of nonsense kind of guy. So risk warning education, don't need to read that. <clears throat> so why use advanced kind of candlestick patterns? Now I think for me the, the basic use of candlesticks gives you know a clear individual candle and a signal of what a trade can potentially do in the future. What I think is that individual candlesticks are great, but you have to be very wary on the time scale in which you use them. So one of the uh, you know the, the questions I get asked the most times is what indicators do I use and what time frames? Okay, so Indicators, it varies. I look at the same indicator multiple time frames. When I look at candlesticks, I look at candlesticks in addition to other, you know, kind of indicators, oscillators. But again, the time frames are very important. If you get, you know, a, a, hang, a hammer hanging man doji on, on a four hourly or daily chart, it's going to be much more powerful than seeing that on a minute chart or five minute chart. I mean, that's just, that's just common sense, to be honest. So, what we're trying to figure out is what does a candlestick pattern mean, when, and how is it relevant to what I'm trading? I guess before we begin, a couple of things to remember is that you know all the points should be adhered to to help cancel out any you know obvious errors. Confirmation is, is something that traders crave, and traders need that confirmation. And that's again why mentoring service comes down to this. People know what's right. People know what they should do. They just need that little bit of reassurance. And that's the kind of things I give because sometimes doing the most obvious thing in the market is the right thing to do. But as I've said a million times over, trading's not about being right, it's about being right at the right time. So it's figuring out where the bigger picture is, zooming down into them time scales, figuring out where you can buy, where you can sell, where that value is, and then getting involved. And that again, you know, can be on different time frames. So if you're trading a five minute chart, doesn't mean you can't get a trigger from an hourly chart. Obviously, the higher up the time frame that you go, the more people are looking at it, the more self-fulfilling nature of technical analysis then kicks in, and the more likelihood you are of being right. The other side of candlesticks is just as important, is that if everybody's looking at the same thing, yeah, we have the banks, the institutions, the central banks, you know, remember we've got these poor old uh, hedge funds worry about their futures, their returns, that can then look at something that we know to be true, that works 90% of the time. And in the short term, they can manipulate it, move the market in the other way. Again, we've all heard of pin bars, stop grabbers, short squeezes. These are 
institutional terms to get retail traders out. So just because we see something, it should be right, doesn't mean it is. And this again is things that I kind of teach that is very difficult for traders to understand. I almost put a trade on expecting to be wrong. I can look at a chart, and even though I've done it for as many, many years as I have, I can look at a chart, look at a trade, and I'm always expecting to be wrong when I put it on, always. If I'm right, it's actually a disappointment. Sounds crazy. But what I'm looking to do is I start my trade small and I build bigger positions to get better prices. Because if I know what you know, then somebody else knows what I know and you know. And they're going to use it for their own benefit. To manipulate the markets in the short term to get that little bit of edge. So if I'm looking to sell the DAX, I'm happy to take an offside position averaging over 20, 30 pips. Because I know in the short term, I'm right. I am always right. This is the frightening thing about my trading career in life. But doesn't necessarily mean I'm right at the right time. So if I start small, I've got room to maneuver into that trade and let the market go against me and get in. And again, candlesticks confirm and also compound these views. Types of candlestick patterns, there will be a million different ways of describing these things. There are a million different ways that you can go out and search for candlestick patterns, individual candles, and what suits you. I don't know what, again, you know, the, the mainstream refer to these as, but there's, there's kind of a few things that have always worked for me, and I'm going to point out today. And that's the bullish, bearish kicker, single island formation, reversal, confirmation patterns, cluster island formations, Bullish and bearish flags, wedges, symmetrical triangles. The last three, it doesn't matter what you're looking at. It doesn't matter if it's candlestick bars or uh, you know, kind of little dots on the screen. You know, they are actual patterns. But I think the whole point is, is when you see how something is built up, very much like my my old friend Fibonacci. Once you see how something is, has been built up and formed, then the future seems a little bit more logical. And that's the, the whole point of this presentation today, talking about candlesticks. It's not about the finite. It's not about what is known. We all know everything that is known. It's using the way things are formed, which is very important. Looking at them candle bodies, looking at the, the size of those candle bodies, look at the individual candles that make them, then using that as a tool to then look what future movement can look like and how we can interact with, with us as traders. Now, the bearish kind of kicker reversal, I mean, these are pretty basic uh, uh, charts. I'm not going to make any apologies or excuses. I mean, I'm trying to kind of, you know, get candlesticks and smash you in the face with it. You know, it, it, they are obvious. Everybody looks at candles. Everybody understands what a candle looks like. And there are certain patterns that just work. Now, you're going to see bullish kicker reversals, mainly on the higher time frame. So you're talking intraday wise maybe hourlies four hourlies and then kind of you know higher time frames daily weekly monthly i will show you examples in live markets right off this presentation of gaps in the market and how they work right gaps are very important so essentially this bullish kicker reversal is nonsense it means nothing it's three down candles with a gap the gap's important not the color of the candle absolutely irrelevant this is another thing that you know people make money from selling books, telling you the absolutely obvious. The market went down, it came back up with a gap, the gap didn't close. That's much more important than the colour of the candles or whatever. So again, think about why gaps happen. Gaps happen because of new news, new information. The markets have never traded more politically and with more volatility than they have now. The most powerful man in the world is a 70-year-old psychopathic misogynist lunatic and he, he, he puts his word out on Twitter so you tell me you tell me what's gonna happen in the world yeah I don't know but the thing is when things happen they filter through into technical formation technical patterns and these are displayed in candlesticks so when something was going down and it reverses and goes back up then this is an absolute you know technically perfect as all these examples will be of course of a bullish kicker reversal a market with a strong downtrend has reversed with a gap that hasn't closed. But that's what you're looking at, the gap that hasn't closed. And this will be a theme that goes through the rest of these candlestick patterns. So what do you think a bearish kicker reversal is? Hmm. Well, you don't have to be uh, you know, a rocket scientist to work that out. At the end of the day, um, 
the the markets go up, and then uh, you know we see uh, you know the the markets then you know create this gap and go down. So what has been happening is you know the markets close towards the highs in the green candles, and then uh, you know again gap down towards the low side. So these these, these various kicker reversals again, I focus in on maybe you know your fifteen minute your hourlies, you know maybe your four hourlies, and any kind of gap in the market, you know going from an uptrend or a downtrend, it, it is what's important here. And obviously, the colour of the candles are important. You know, seeing a strong directional trend, be it green, be it red, ending and then closing with that colour, that's what's important. That's what the confirmation is. That, you know, this closes a doji with no candlestick body and just wicks on the high and the low, then that might be indecision. This is decided that, you know, it has to be, you know, to the low, it has to be, you know, closing to the low side, and it has to be red. So when we look at all of these candlestick kind of patterns, we're generally looking at reversal patterns or we're looking at continuation patterns. So the reversal pattern, as we've just shown, is things that go in one direction and then change. Now that can be down to just absolute fundamentals that the opinion of the market has changed, or it can be down to technical decisions that we've breached, a line of you know being oversold, overbought, you know, your straight trend lines, you know, diagonal trend lines, whatever. But the continuation patterns I think for me, uh, what's important right now, because the markets are so uneasy with, with, with Trump, with Brexit, with you know, et cetera, et cetera, the, um, the idea is that once a trend is formed, that in the short, medium term, more people are going to have that idea. So the Brexit thing it is bad. Okay, So Brexit was bad. Pound dropped off, you know, 32-year lows against the dollar. And then it wasn't so bad because we had a plan or we didn't have a plan or whatever, <laughs> we're going to have to do something about it so the pound recovered. But the overall trend is down because at the end of the day, you know, Article 50 now has been voted through Parliament, we're going to trigger it and it's unknown. People don't like unknown. Markets don't like unknown. So these candlestick patterns on the higher time frames are just people's digital footprint of what their vote is, what their, what their thoughts are and that, that that will be that the pound is going to be weaker compared to other currencies because other kind of countries don't have that uncertainty which is kind of you know a bit of a, a moot point I think because obviously all countries have their own um, problems and you know you look at America obviously huge amounts of problems but they seem to have a guy that wants to do something he's going out and doing it but how does that fit in with the rest of the world now this is where it's very difficult to kind of tie in that 80 20 rule that I've always used of, of fundamentals affecting the markets, but in a technical way that 20% of the time markets move fundamentally, 80% of the time that idea is the technical foundation, so be it, you know, kind of chart patterns, candlesticks, etc. And that is true, but the way the markets are moving right now is a way that I have not really experienced, um, really, to be honest, because anything can be said and anything. It's basically licensed to print its own rules. So when we have you know, the pound and its relationship with the dollar, the euro, it interacts with these currency correlations and coefficients in a different way because everything's still trading you know, with this under, underlying kind of Trump or underlying Brexit or underlying you know, kind of problems in Europe. So the, the real kind of correlations are not working. So things that you, know, you have to rely on when, when the times are like this and so you know, very unpredictable, are things like candlestick patterns. So things like pennants, triangle, flags, and wedges, they don't really change, and they haven't really changed ever. So when you're trying to figure out what's happening in, the, in, in this mad world, then it's trying to figure out, you know, what has worked in the past, what will happen in the future. And this is things that have happened time and time again. You know, a lot of quant traders, you know, a lot of people that, you know, think they're very intelligent, think they can fade out the news. You, you show me one quant trader just fading out news has made any money, I'll be very surprised. It has speeded things up and it's changed things and the opportunity to make money is great, the opportunity to lose money is great because although we see these things, although I'll go through some perfect examples as always, the, the, the modern examples of pennants, triangle, flags and wedges, they're generally always broken, they're always broken because algos spot them, you know there's always some little geek out there doing a little program you know, that spots a, a pennant, a triangle, or flag a wedge, an intertrader. We give you auto, auto charts for free. Well, I'm not being funny. I, I could write an algorithm 
And I'm not even, you know, I've, I have cleverer people than me writing my stuff. And I could write an algorithm to spot a pen or a triangle. It's obvious. So the market's so competitive and so complete and so full of knowledge that it's almost looking at these things as a self-fulfilling prophecy, but look for them to break before they actually, you know, come to fruition. So we're looking at continuation patterns, you know, we're looking like anything like an Elliott wave or Fibonacci, you know, expansion. We're looking for initial move, consolidation, breakout, new trend. So again, the whole point of continuation pattern is the, the new trend should be in the original direction. So what we're looking at is this downtrend here. So very, very clear pennant, the market hits support, resistance, the market consolidates, but the original trend works to the downside. So the individual candlestick patterns they don't really give you much of a clue for trigger points, but you see more big red bodies than you see green bodies, so that indicates more selling than buying. You know, you get a maybe a little individual gap here that shows the market retracing. But I guarantee if you did a Fibonacci from the high to the low, that would be the 50% Fibonacci retra retracement, which aligns with the market consolidating into this kind of wedge pattern and what happens is the market moves down, consolidates, builds a decision in this point in this blue area and then when it breaks down again it moves in the original direction of that trend. That's a continuation pattern so you've got candlesticks which indicate the market selling, you have no real individual candlesticks which give you much of a trigger, you know, again there's no clear cut you know, doges, hanging mans, hammers, that are absolutely pivotal in the direction of the market. But the overall picture gives you an idea. There's more selling than buying and as the market contracts, as it consolidates, and then breaks to the low side. So what we're seeing is, uh, you know, again, an idea of using candlesticks in traditionally very, uh, very important Patterns, you know, rising wedges, falling wedges. So both these patterns have two trends, also known as, you know, again, boundary lines. So you can, you can make this as flyer as you like, and you can try and make this, you know, sound very technically important, and uh, you know, give ourselves a pat on the back. It's just, just trend lines. It just as simple as that. You know, the market's moving in an understandable direction based upon the, you know, the highs and lows of candles, and it's coming to a point or getting close to a point, and that's just what wedges, you know, are. They're just coming to a point, and they're generally in one direction, which leads itself to that continuing nature of directional trade. So pennants people like a little bit better, and you know, uh, triangles a little bit better because they're that they're almost absolute. But for me, the whole point of things like pennants uh, and wedges are a lot better because there's a little tiny gap of interpretation, and that little tiny gap of interpretation. Is, is you know is again what gives us our edge. So the symmetrical triangles are what they say they are. They're symmetrical triangles, and don't be too frightened uh, again about them being perfect. Again, like I said before, the whole point of everybody understanding the markets are all knowing that you know things to do with support, resistance, you know any kind of pattern can be scanned by a computer instantly. So what you know we're always one step behind as just mere human beings, but still on edge on human being as, as just I think got the edge and we see the kind of tops being resistance the bottoms being support and we see this breakout here and you know that again would be maybe an algorithm or something that brings people out of this potential trend channel but it's important to know again with the candlesticks where we close so you can take candlestick highs lows tops bottoms and understand you know where they should be but understand that fake outs breakouts all these kind of things are part of the bigger picture so if the market doesn't close below this trend line okay it's tried to break out again maybe a stop grabber to get any uh, potential weak longs out but what has happened is that's almost given us another confirmation that this is right that the market has tried to fake us out, it's failed to fake us out, it's closed within the trend line, then after that we see a big buying emphasis. The market goes up, consolidates to a point, and breaks that higher trend. Now, as I've said always, trading is about being right, yeah, at the right time, not having the correct opinion. We can all buy here, 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 and get stopped out here. This is what the market wants us to believe, that we're wrong at this point. You get out the trade here, Market gets back to here, 
another little try here, and then goes to here, here, down to here, then up to here. It's about being right at the right time. Symmetrical triangles are good because they are absolute. If you went to school, you know, you know what a symmetrical triangle is. It's as simple as that. It's one of the most basic foundations of maths. So the whole point is, you know, again, buying and selling. I mean, the individual candlesticks, again, give us relatively no kind of strong opinions what was going to happen. But we see green candle bodies, okay, that's indicating buying. And indecision, indecision. So these kind of almost doji style candlesticks here. So indecision leads to the downside. Then we see this, I wouldn't call it a hammer because we're not at the top, but it's certainly an indecision candle. That the market tries to break down, close on the trend lines, and that for me, oh, as subtle as it is, gives an indication the trend is continuing. Until we see you know, big wicks on the top side and red bodies, then this market is not retracing. So bull flags, are, again, are another easy thing to spot. They're a market going up. The market then consolidates into a downward formation, adhering to support, resistance, and the market breaks to the upside. No real candlesticks in the middle that give us any indication that you know individual candlesticks, you know, again, are very distinctive. What we have is that you know lots of green bodies and red bodies, you know, granted, but all the wicks, yeah, okay, are, are, you know, are really kind of indicating that, that, that there's no real direction. So the direction and lack of direction, we see green candles, we see red candles, but the weights are kind of like down, they're up, they're up, they're down. They're not giving us any indication, really, that there's any strong decision. And that's more powerful than actually getting a confirming candlestick pattern because the fact that the market's gone up and there's no decision to go down, there's no real decision to go up, there's nothing confirming either way, means that what's likely to happen? Well, the most likely thing to happen is when you see four big green candles that move to a high and, you know, and support on the low, that they're going to move in the original direction. So it's it sometimes what the candlesticks don't say. They don't confirm anything, so just go with the obvious. Go with the self-fulfilling nature of what candlesticks are, Yeah, buy low and then sell high. So the, the, the trend continues. So bear flags, again, are exactly the same. You see strong directional moves. Again, Fibonacci is great for these things. I guarantee that this is a 50% Fibonacci round about here. The market is a dear to that 50% Fibonacci closing eventually below it, without closing above it, and then we go down. But again, the market moves down, moves in an orderly pattern, but nothing really apart from indecision telling us what the market wants to do. So we finally break the trend. Yeah, the simple, simple trend line. And it goes from here to here, and the market moves down in the original direction. So don't pay attention too much sometimes to the actual candlestick, you know, individual candlesticks. You know, unless they're a gap or unless they're a cluster, you know, the, the actual f individual candlesticks are a few and far between. And when they work, you look back at the chart and go, of course they wouldn't work. But it's everything else that goes into the chart pattern that are actually, you know, quite important. So what I'll move on to is island patterns. These are short to medium signals, again, which include gaps. Now, gaps are, are much more important when it comes to you know, figuring out candlesticks. So what we see here is the market moving up, and the individual candlesticks, you know, again, we see a lot more green than red. The red shows indecision. You know, long wicks show markets you know, making decision what's going to happen. But what we see is the market here at the top with the hammer formation gaps up, but the market can't close high closes towards the low, and then the next candle opens, and this can be hourly, four hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, it's a massive reversal signal. So unlike the continuations we saw, this is the market saying it's had enough of being high, it's again re refused to close towards the top and, and reward this gap for being formed, it gaps below, leaving this candle here as an island on its own. And these are the most powerful signals, gap followed by gap, results in reversal. Again, we see it a lot in the uh, the up markets, and markets are greedy. You know, markets are greedy and, and fearful. So on the greedy side, when markets are going up, when we see things like this, a gap being formed, a gap being formed here, all with green candles, this is a license just to buy money. Now, the fear side, you generally see the candle bigger because people are much more frightened about gaps on the low side. But high side, they're buying into the rally, buying into the euphoria, buying into the, the kind of greed side. So green candles, again, you know, no particular individual candles which scream out, this is, you know, X, Y, and Z, but the combination of having gaps 
is what's important. A, a candle left on its own that isn't tested or broken means that anyone that's long here is long here, here, here. Yeah, in the, in the previous green candles. So you've got much more momentum on your side. So the kind of island cluster formations are much more powerful because this brings into, again, the very element of time that whatever was happening to make the market go up here, the market gapped up, okay, sold back down and thought about it and ranged between these two levels here. But essentially, all the thinking yeah, that created this uptrend is still long because this gap isn't closed. Yeah, the market then when it gaps up to this higher side means that everybody's long here. It's probably long from here. And this is just confirming and compounding what made the market go high. So again, these gaps. If a gap can't close, it's very powerful because the majority of people are still in the direction of which created it. When you see another gap that leads an island formation of people just jobbing the markets, being short and long, this confirms this. Yeah, all this. So island patterns where people have had time. This can be one minute, five minute. 15 minute hourly, daily, weekly, monthly. The longer this is in people's view, the more it compounds what's already happened. So that is a very powerful combination. An Isle of Cluster formation is probably one of the most powerful combinations you're going to see. So I guess with all these candlesticks, we have to, they're a way of viewing the markets. They individually will give us trigger points, and as I've just demonstrated, you know, in, in, in pattern wise, they'll give us confirming kind of confirmation. But at the end of the day, we have to tie these things with indicators and oscillators. So, again, the basic moving average. You know, we see here a bullish hammer formation. The market goes green, holds above the moving average, and it goes up. Okay, so moving average is just another lagging indicator that can indicate confirmation. Simple. Two moving averages when you see crosses. You know, again, this is kind of things that you know the, the FCA are teaching people to you know, you know to, to learn. You know, crosses of moving averages. I mean. You know, you have to be a child to think that's, you know, a serious way of, of, of viewing the markets. But, again, you have to go back to that self-filling nature. Crosses, crosses, blah, 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 different lagging indicators confirmed with, you know, bullish reversal patterns of a downtrend, a dear to what's going to happen in the future. So, again, it's understanding the bigger picture rather than individual candlesticks. You know, it's, it's the gaps, it's the patterns as a whole rather than just one bullish hammer is going to make the entire market go up. It's not. Okay, that has to be confirmed with other things. Uh, again, use things like RSI. RSI is another way of looking at the markets that overbought and oversold. I mean, again, lagging indicators are that when below certain points or above certain points, the markets are given as indication, and they are self-fulfilling. So the market's trading around the midpoint, and you know we get some buying momentum. So instead of you know selling it, we buy it because if the RSI goes up until it tops above the 75, we don't sell it. So it's another way of confirming, but look at the amount of time it takes. Yeah, Lagging indicators takes a lot of time to get from the lows, a lot of time to get to the highs. So these confirming things like moving averages are just a way of understanding that these things give support to what we already know. This is not the be-all and end-all in the markets. That is a low point that's reversed, gets a hammer, and then again is lending to support. Steve? Yes, right. Can I interrupt for a second? We're getting one or two people on the webinar, just a technical thing. Uh, one or two people saying they can't hear. Um, so, right. clearly, if you can, if you could just use the chat box, everybody, um, to give me a sort of a straw poll of who, who's hearing things okay, just a, a, a why or a no um, would be good. Um, okay, well, I've been talking for quite a while, so hopefully yeah, people can hear. I, I, think it, I think it might be. Uh, just localized to one or two people, but when I get more than three, I think sometimes are. it can be uh, you know on the on the iPad or iPhone. Sometimes these things do drop off. Um, it does. It sometimes it can sometimes drop off, but the best thing to do is actually to leave it, and then it just reconnects itself. Uh, yeah. In most cases, so okay, overwhelmingly well, everybody's, everybody's hearing everyone. Time. So that's great. Okay, so do you want do you want to carry on then, Steve? Thanks. Yes, Sorry, yeah, of course, yeah. No, no, no. Again, always alert these things. The last thing I want to do is be talking to uh, to nobody. <laughs> no, no, no. I assure you, everybody's here. There's about 120 in, in, in of us here in, in the room, which is great. So right. okay. carry on. Thank you. 
Okay, so I guess the disadvantages are, uh, again, people of, often come to me uh, for advice and, uh, you know, to kind of understand the kind of mentoring side and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And there are literally hundreds of oscillators, which means it's very difficult to figure out that holy grail of trading. There isn't a holy grail of trading. There's nothing that all works together in one way that gives you the perfect answer. The whole point why markets exist is they're a meeting point for buyers and sellers that assimilate all the information they know. Uh, they think they know and they can see and it's getting to that point and candlesticks represents that so it isn't it isn't uh, again something that's just going to change your life if you don't understand candlesticks then it's like trying to follow a map when you don't understand lines you know it, it's as simple as that candlesticks are a representation of people's buying and selling at you know, at certain points in time and and the patterns although <sighs> When the world was much simpler back in the 80s, and again, like people like Steve Nissen wrote these books, it was it was fine. You know, once a few people knew what things meant, then that's fine because self-fulfilling prophecy had a very you know kind of strong and positive effect. But in the modern markets, strong positive things don't exist. There's no positive things anymore. It's only negative. Okay, anything you know, so does somebody else. Anything you think, so does computer. Anything you think, so does UBS, so does Deutsche Bank, so does the central bank. So the markets almost use your information and knowledge against you. And this is the real art of trading that I find it very difficult to teach in my webinars or books because it's trying to convey that message to people individually. You know, you'll look at the markets and think of things and, and, and you know, have reassurance, have confirmation and, and, and make it logical in your mind. But the market's mind is laughing at you. It's just going, yes, I know you think all these things, so I'm going to do this because I know back-tested you know, through three months and whatever on these algorithms, black boxes, grey boxes, white boxes, whatever. I know you'll do this, and it's just numbers game. What the whole point of trading is that all these things are used together in combination. Anybody can look at a moving average. Anyone can spot a triangle, a pennant, a, a doji, a, you know, a, a hanging man, a hammer. The whole point about candles is it's just a way to view the data. You have to then take that into the markets and use it for your own benefit. There's obviously an advantage using multiple oscillators is that you know it gives you more conforming things. So more the more confirming things you get, the more likely you are to be right. However, the whole point about these things is it's the false signals. It's it's the the, the idea that everybody knows what you know. So if you're using a moving average cross 20 day and 50 day, for instance, um, it's pretty basic. So if it's, if it's that basic, it's going to work because people look at it. But if it's that basic, it might not work in the short term because it is so basic, people know they can exploit it. So this is the thing as well. The whole point about this presentation is that I can rattle through every individual candlestick, every cluster uh, candlestick pattern, and you could Google it, you could read books on it, and it's fine. That isn't the point of trading, okay? That isn't going to help your trading. Your, your, your trading is going to move on vastly. If you understand that what you're looking at, it's like the matrix. It's the truth, but it's not the truth until it is the truth. The green and red pill, okay? When you look at the markets right now, you know as much as anybody else based upon them candlestick patterns and what's happening. But what was going to happen in the future, that's the difficult part. That's where you're going to make your money. And it's that very short period in time where everything is aligned that the most pain is going to be endured. You look at a, a daily chart, weekly chart, monthly chart, if you'd sold the FTSE or bought gold, you're right. You're always right. When you look at the intraday charts, sometimes you're always wrong. And that's the pain you've got to endure, and that's what you've got to understand. So again, I mean, putting this all together, you know, looking at one oscillator, the trend, the patterns, all these kind of things, you know, doing work an example, you know, individually, okay, indecision here. So maybe, you know, that is a point to buy the market. Maybe it's a point to sell it. It's indecision to anything. A hammer, but it's not really a hammer. This, again, you know, shooting star type formation, you know, again, might be a reversal pattern. And again, doji. So when you're looking at candlestick patterns on their own, they'll actually give you a lot of clarity. Yeah, you have to build them up with other things. So we've seen a doji hammer shooting star engulfing pattern. When you put that together and you put the wedges on and the moving average, well, really nothing's really helped you until this point here, which isn't even any kind of strong candlestick pattern. It's just hit a high point. Yeah, we move lower, we close below the moving average, we test resistance, kind of engulfing pattern here, and then the market's going to carry on doing what we know based upon the RSI and move down. But when you look at this individually, none of these individual candlestick patterns give us any real confidence to buy or sell. 
the trades are just purely 50-50. So I mean, what's it waiting for? It's waiting to do what the overall pattern says. The whole point is, the most important point is this, the red the selling. Yeah, The moving average it helps us, you know, when we get confirmation towards the end. But the the kind of you know wedge pattern that's being formed, and the fact that you know markets will do what they did before, as they will in the future, is compounded by the RSI topping out, compounded by closing below the moving average. But it's not until the end of the formation the markets then sell off. So again, it's all putting it in context. So we're looking back at the markets. I mean. We can go through individual candlestick patterns. I mean, this this is again how, how how I view the markets. It's only hourlies. So pound taking a pummeling, but it, it's almost easy, isn't it? You know, again, it's where's the market going to sell? Red Fibonacci lines. Okay, so it breaks out. You know, below the moving average, 50% closes below. You know, where's it going to get to? Well, if it gets to the low side, it's going to get to the 423, a 124817. Yeah, it's got to all these Fibonacci lines previous. So what we're trying to figure out is Again, when's he going to do it? So like, you, know, you tie it in with the other oscillators, the other indicators like your moving averages. If we go to the uh, the buyer side, you know, maybe we get some kind of uh, confirming indicator from from a lagging indicator side. Well, here, red. What does red indicate? Well, the markets are overbought. So okay, you have to wait for it. That's the whole point. You wait. You close inside the Bollinger Bands. You know, indecision candle here on the hourlies. Market thinking what it wants to do. Sells a little bit of profit taking. Doesn't close outside the uh, upper Bollinger Band. Closes below the 50%. Market moves down to the Fibonacci's. So it's combining things like Fibonacci, combining things like um, um, moving averages, Bollinger Bands, and getting the bigger picture. This is the whole point, getting the bigger picture. And you look through all these charts, the individual candlestick patterns don't necessarily give you the best idea. I mean, again, if you look at things like DAX, maybe on smaller time frames, we get an idea. But, you know, here, a gap. Okay, so the market gaps down, indecision, goes back up to close the gap. But what does the market do? Continues in the direction of the gap. So the indecision candle here on the dailies doesn't give us confirmation, but it gives an idea that hmm, market's gapped down and we don't know why. Well, it doesn't close to the high and retrace it. So what does it do? It moves down to all these previous time frames. Yeah, these high level points of uh, support and resistance that we thought. Well, there we go. And then just look at it. There we go. If the DAX is going to break this level, it's going to get to this level down here because it's got nowhere else to go to. Yeah, the markets want to fill gaps, and that's why I've worked so long and hard on, on our view charts to to kind of get rid of complications, to get rid of views like Ichimoku clouds and you know too much noise. Markets want to fill gaps. We want to go from highs to lows, lows to highs. So tied in with the markets, so look at this, a perfect example here on the hourly, which is a great time frame. The market's massively, massively over uh, bought at this point. So the grey area and the bias peak here, so you're expecting to keep selling into the highs, you know it's going to go higher because everyone's expected to sell it, so you do the opposite, and then what the market does, bang. A little bit of indecision, but you know, it goes down. So, you know, from this point here, you can make yourself, you know, 100 ticks, 120 ticks, just by doing the right thing at the right time. Everybody's looking for it to sell, so sell when it's green, yeah? Keep selling until you hit a logical point. And then again, get back in selling, you know, to average inch position when it's going red. This is the whole point. It's about being right at the right time, not being right in your opinion, because the markets know exactly what you do. Yeah, so they're going to push you to the extreme. So the individual candlestick patterns are less important. But as I've said, Doji and Gap, market's going to continue in that gap, which it does. You get two days of selling. You don't have to get all out, you know, all that selling. You just look at the hourlies. So you get involved when the gap is sell. The high points, Fibonacci, sell red, sell red, sell red, sell red. Mm. Not exactly rocking science, is it? And when you get it compounded here with indicators, pff, I mean that, you could basically sell your entire account on that for 74 ticks. Simple. That's how easy trading can be. But it's taking that bigger picture and then, you know, kind of making it work for you. All right, Simon, any, any thoughts or questions coming through? I'm just aware that I've spoke for a long time. Uh, well, uh, another Simon uh, <clears throat> has asked has asked if he uh, can have a copy of the PowerPoint presentation. I don't know if you if you 
let that out or well I mean it's the same as the recording so I mean you might as well just look at the recording uh, just to confirm that 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 is recorded <clears throat> so one or two people still having sound issues which is strange majority okay but definitely one or two having sound so apologies for that if the system is uh, playing up um, Maybe maybe it's the uh, I I don't know the, the Jersey internet. I know we're, we're both in the oh, same place, but I mean it, 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 I, I do have I do have issues with people on um, iPads and Mac devices in general. Uh, Go to webinar has not been historically very good on uh, on Mac devices. Okay, well here we are, Peter. Um, it says what are the indicators that Steve uses? Okay, well, all the indicators I use are a combination of things that I know have worked in the past. So, uh, again, when you look at my charts, you know, they're, they're pretty transparent. A lot of straight lines, green and red. You know, you sell the red, you buy the green. Um, but the whole point is that when you're trying to uh, confirm it with other indicators, they're a combination of things like RSI, uh, stochastics, um, things that everybody knows. What I've tried to do. Um, as most people do, is, uh, you know, I've saved you the bother. I've spent astronomical amounts of money hiring literal rocket scientists to try and put what's going on in my tiny brain into a computer system. And what the conclusion is, you know, I can only take things so far. Lagging indicators are just that, lagging. So I take all the lagging indicators from demarcation to, to uh, you know, to RSI, to stochastics, and I've tried to put them within my own tolerances and my own understanding of what happens around these tolerances. So when you see the green and the red, again, historically, they always generally work. So right now in gold, we're topping out. So we're going to probably get um, a little bit higher and then top out. Well, the whole point is you have to wait for these, the really red parts. And that's the tolerance I've tried to put in. Like, you know, the S&P here, we all know it's topping out here, so it keeps going up until we get that spike up to the high point. Yeah, again, not a, a definitive candlestick pattern, but it's got the wick towards the top. It's showing a definite reversal, and then the selling happens. So it's about being right at the right time. Everybody's short. There's looking at RSI to cast it, get stops out here because Deutsche Bank, you know, anybody else, UBS, pushes it up in a straight line from here to here. 34 ticks, that's your 2% risk, gets you out. And what do they do? Thanks very much, I'll take all your money. 125 ticks down. So remember that I, I can't find a way of programming the future. I can only tell you to my best ability what's happened in the past to make you build up. So these are a trigger point to think it's going to happen, but don't sell your soul here because the likelihood is if I know it, everyone else knows it. So this is where the pain happens. These are just pain indicators essentially, pain. So people long. Yeah, are winning. People short are losing. When it's green, the opposite. And it's trying to figure out that it's like an indication of what can happen in the future, not right now. That's what indicators are and oscillators are. They're lagging indicators. So use it with almost like a delay of one, two, three candles, depending on the time frame you're looking at. Okay, anything else? Thanks, Steve. Yeah. Um, okay, James is asking, is it the, the I view the, the green, red, and grey indicators. I think you touched on them already. Um, could you just recap? Yeah, I mean, I've got a number of indicators I use. You know, there's a bias indicator and a grey indicator. The grey indicator was just uh, um, of my many hours of, of speaking to programmers. I just got bored. <laughs> I was just like, just tell me when stuff's not happening. Just tell me when it's not happening. So that is the grey. So the the, the indicator, the grey indicator, um, it just means there's nothing. Uh, fundamentally, technically happening in the markets where you have any edge. So just stop trading, wait for the extremes. So they're, again, they're built up and again, I've always said, you know, I'm, I'm quite clear about these things. You know, if I told you how they worked, I'd have to kill you. And I say that in a joking way, but and I've just wrote an article for, um, you know, a magazine about IP, how it used to be important that people have IP because that's all you had. When you think about the turtle traders, you know, Bill Eckhart and, you know, all that kind of stuff, when they started, they were rich because they made money knowing what they know, and they passed that on to 26 of the traders, they went on to make money, because they had their IP. But no one wants their own IP anymore. They want somebody else's. You can't have my IP, right? Because that's my brain. You can't have it. I give you my charts, my skills as a mentor, and I can get you in tune with the markets. But what I'm trying to do is make you 
your own trader. There is nothing out there, no matter how much the course costs, no matter what the, the monkey that's you know presenting it tells you, there is nothing out there that can make you a better trader than you yourself. And this is the whole point. My charts are a framework that give you a basis to build upon. Right? I trade my funds with these charts every day. I can tell you my all my quotes for Reuters, Bloomberg, all the analysis I write, everything I do is from the basics of understanding what the markets are doing and it's all here. It's all here. Simple as that. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. These these are view charts, uh, Peter's just saying, are they available to buy? Um now I think you have actually given them away to your mentors as a as a part of the package. I, I very rarely sell it anymore, to be honest, uh, Simon, right. because um again I don't need to, you know. <laughs> I do these things a lot of it. I mean uh, Gotta sound terrible, but I do a lot of these things for ego. It's nice to be listened to by hundreds of people. It's nice that people listen to my opinions, buy my books. But at the end of the day, I make the majority of my money from trading. You know, it's this is the whole point of the charts is that if you want to be a serious trader, you need to invest in yourself. And if you come to me and I can mentor you, and I can see you putting the money in to an account. You have the charts for nothing. I'm not interested about selling it. To be honest, I don't need the money uh, from the charts. What I'm interested in is seeing people you know, take my charts, use it as a framework and building on what they're going to do in the future. This is the important part of, of trading. So if you invest in yourself, I'll invest a little bit of time. And don't get me wrong, I'm not going to sit here for hours and hours holding your hand to get you to trade. But it really does still, in this massively cynical world, massively cynical, gives me a little bit of, a little bit of joy seeing people go from ideas to actual reality. Are people making twenty, thirty thousand pounds a month based upon my charts and their own trading, their own ideas. And that gives me a massive buzz because I have a lovely life. I sit here in my, my house on the beach, my swimming pool, the sun has been to, etc. But I'm on my own for a lot of time. So it's the little things sometimes that give me the greatest pleasure. And that's seeing people use ideas that I've brought to them in the wrong way to make money. And that's really what it's all about. I'm not a quick fix. I'm not here with all the answers. I'm here to give you a framework that's tried and tested in the charts and that little bit of 1% help that I wish I had you know, 15 years ago. Exactly. Uh, Carwin is asking a good question. Do you buy a candle breakout or wait for the price to come back to the old resistance? The thing for me is, you know, you've got to be balls out when you're a trader. So like here, when you break the, 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 the pound. I'm a buyer of the pound because it's just selling on what we know. We know that Brexit's going to happen. We always knew Brexit was going to happen. Only the FT apparently didn't know it was going to happen. But when you break levels like this, of course I'm a buyer. Because, you know, I don't wait for the confirmation because all it's gone. All the confirmation is gone. It's here. It can go up to here, that's fine, but what you're looking for as a trader is that short-term risk. So we've got up 30 pips here. So if you look at the pound here, all you've got to do is go to the pound in all time frames. And again, you go to the smaller time frame to confirm. Okay, so I want to be buying the pound again against levels that I understand. Green, green, yeah, rejection, 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 big rejection here. So it looks obvious on, on, the, on the hourly chart, but on the five-minute chart, we have plenty of consolidation. So even if I'm just going to buy it at a level that I know, here, okay, a good daily level, I'm still making 17 ticks. On, a, on 50 pounds, 100 pounds, 1,000 pounds a point, you'll take that all day long. And this is the point of trading, being right at the right time. It can go from here to here now on the higher charts. Everybody knows now it's going to reject and probably close in the hourly, yeah, but all, all the edge is gone. So what you're looking for is confirmation is great, and if you're that kind of trader, you need the confirmation, that's great. But my, again, my whole point is have a, a general view and do what, do what the opposite is. So when it's ha, ha, you know, smashing down on the smaller time frames, even the higher time frames in, in red, then, then buy it when it's really, really red. Don't wait for it to be a candlestick reversal or a pin bar or whatever and green. Buy it when it's red if that's your view. So you get the most edge when you're doing things at the extremes, which I guess sounds obvious, but... Again, a, a difficult thing to kind of explain when you, you trade the markets real time. But that probably answers the question in a roundabout way. It does indeed. Thank you for that. Any any final questions or thoughts, Simon? I mean, seems to be a quite a knowledgeable crowd today. I mean, again, I think the whole thing with candlesticks is that, you know, it, it, it's, it's an alluring thing. You know, people, you know, get into candlesticks and think it's the only answer. It's not. Everything 
is the answer but in moderation so it's using the, the kind of technical analysis and visual side of candlesticks with other indicators and oscillators and building that picture and tying it in with the fundamentals you know your overall view as I said can be right but there's no prizes for being right in the long term there's only prizes for being right when you're actually trading and that's what a lot of people forget and that's all, the massive sticking point that a lot of traders my experience is that they switch out from day trading to longer term in air quotes investing because they, they hate being stopped out but if you just harness how markets do that then you know if a market moves a thousand points you can make infinitely more money trading that thousand point move intraday than you can just by holding things and you're not leaving money on the table I take it Steve I mean when it comes to the analysis of, of, of the candles and so forth we're, we're talking about you know is it gone up down what color is it and all these sort of things is it a case that you go through a period of learning these the, the, these analysis patterns and you know, much like when I, I I learned to speak Spanish younger and, and I went through a, a sort of a eureka moment one night in a barn in Barcelona where I spoke back to my Spanish chums without having first thought about the sentence in English translated in my head and then spoke spoke it you get to that point where you just automatically instinctively just replied in Spanish. Is it the same here with the charts that you should be able to get to a point where you're not having to really think so much about what you're looking at, it just sort of comes into focus after a while and you look at it. Is that what we should be... You've, you've absolutely hit the nail on the head though Simon, that, that's a great analogy. Mm. Totally true, 100%. That when you see things, you know, the thinking part of it is over, the doing part of it is what you do. You do things because you know statistically and what you've seen, what you've done in the past, it's right. Yeah, you don't have somebody holding your hand, slapping you on the arse, saying, off you go, go and buy and sell this. What you have is that instinct to do things because you've seen it. And that instinct you need because you're not Goldman Sachs, you know, you're not UBS, you don't have a million pound account, a billion pound account, you have a small account. So you have to be doing things automatically, almost as you know, a robot would, without emotion. Doing the right thing at the right mm -hmm. time because the seconds, yeah, that elapse can be your downfall. So yeah. candlestick patterns, they're part of it. But you're exactly right. When markets spike down like here, you know, you're just clicking by 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 averaging in at good levels and before you know what you thought was happened it's back up and you've made your money the market can go happily back to a 50% fib or back to the Bollinger Band or moving average but you've actually made your money there what you do after that is a bonus this is the point it needs to be autopilot so it's bigger than candlesticks it's bigger than just everything else we learn it's being in that emotional state to trade the markets when it's right to trade the markets and it's generally doing things when you're wrong Sometimes when you're, you're buying the market, it's going down. Your instinct is to get out and protect your capital. Almost the opposite sometimes is if I buy more lower prices, yeah, I'm not actually wrong. The market's wrong, and then you make the money. Sounds a really weird way of looking at trading, but this is the thing. It's not. It's not again. That's not right for everybody. Everyone. I think a lot of people out there they listen to you know your uh, webinars and they speak to these different presenters and stuff there aren't many people that actually present and trade and have made money this is the my kind of bugbear and I'm not gonna say any of you buy my charts or well, you buy me you know, if you get my mentoring that I'm gonna change you but I'll sit you down like nobody's ever sat you down since you probably dad when you were a kid and told you how it is and this is the thing that successful people benefit from why does Tiger Woods you know have a, a, have a, have a caddy a coach He's one of the best golfers that ever lived because everybody needs that little bit of reassurance. And sometimes it's just the way I phrase things. Sometimes I'm telling you what you already know, but to hear from a different person makes all the difference. I'm not saying it's you know life changing, but it has been for some people. It's that little tiny one percent that I can add, and I've proven to add over the years, that really changes people for me. Good traders to great traders, great traders to exceptional traders. And you know the proof in the pudding. At the end of the day, if you're on my Skype list or you're part of my mentoring program, if you're a muppet, you don't get my time. If I see potential in you and invest in yourself, you get you know you get the help you need. It's a unique service, Simon. What can I say? I mean, uh, yeah. again, the numbers are dwindling, as in the, the amount of people I'm taking, because I just um, I can't give my time to everybody. Well, how, how does that mean? That's just essentially talk about it. what 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 sort of format. Does your mentoring take take place? What can someone expect? I mean, initially, you know, once I'm giving you the charts and you kind of you know you see the markets through you know a, a kind of 
a consistent way, then generally, you know, it, it, it's down to conversations. You know, I speak to people just as we're speaking now. You know, we'll, we'll have a chat for an hour. I'll we'll get to know you, get to understand you. And people like things in different ways. Some people like to communicate via uh, Skype messenger, send me a chart. I'm thinking this. I'll reply back. Or some people want to call and say, you know, I'm thinking this. What do you think? You know, the calls can last from 30 seconds, you know, to, to, to half an hour. People are all different. This whole point, you know, I text people at five o'clock in the morning, like I was with my other traders, you know, over Donald Trump. You know, people making fifteen, twenty thousand pounds in a trade. You know, I'm happy to give the time back. What you've got with me is, you know, somebody who's going to give you the answers you need in, in, in a very timely and no nonsense way. And this isn't me telling you to buy. This isn't me telling you to sell until you're right or wrong. I'm not here for that. I'm somebody who's going to give you uh, an, an opinion and speak to on your level and just really kind of you know be there in a way that that you need and that's different for everybody you know people have mentors and people have you know coaches caddies you know for golf or for, you know, for whatever you know a lot of people have coaches and it doesn't mean they're the best in the game for you know what they do you know like coaches are not generally the best golfers or footballers but the best coach and that is what I'm trying to be the best coach if you want to trade like me you have to pony up, you know, seven figures. So, you know, that's that's the difference. You can't trade like me. But if you want to trade like you want to trade, then I can help you fit that in with what is right for your needs. And only somebody really has had the experience I've had can do that. You know, I'm not just a trader. I'm a professional risk manager, mentor, published author, chief market strategist. List goes on. Whatever. At the end of the day, you know, the proofs are putting <laughs> my clients of, uh, are successful. <laughs> lots of lots of lots of hats, uh, Steve. Atima say, is it what about Bollinger Bands moving averages? Do you have a use these? Well, Bollinger Bands on the screen, they're they're blue. So Bollinger Band is two standard deviations when a moving average. I use twenty period. So essentially, you know, why have a, a moving average when you can Bollinger Bands? They show the upper and lower uh, you know points of of attraction. So yes, everything that I do it revolves around simple principles. Fibonacci and Bollinger Bands are an absolute hand in hand, you know, marriage. So when markets are overbought and oversold, you know, you're pivoting around the moving average and you see. But again they're lagging. So Bollinger bands always work. I mean it's obvious, isn't it? Sell it here. Of course. It goes down. Buy it here, it goes up. You know, self filling prophecy of technical analysis in hindsight is perfect. Using things in real real term. It, again, is the point I'm trying to get to people to. You know, it's kind of we can all look at the chart and go, of course that was going to happen. But how do you make money? Well, it's being right at the right time. So all these things are building up a picture and a story, like being a detective. You know, you only get to kind of solve the crime at the end, and that's the, the kind of P and L. All the clues are there. Indeed, fantastic. Okay, um, I think that just about wraps us up, Steve. We're we're just one minute away from two, so unless there's any final questions. Um, I think we'll we'll let you go. Thank you for your time. Um, oh, there we are. Great stuff. Thank you, says Gus. Oh, lots of lots of. Lots no, of I, again, I mean it, it, it's I'm here, you know, because you know you're a good friend of mine, Simon, and you know, I want to kind of bring these things to the forefront. You know, all the education I do is online. All the education I do is free, and the mentoring is free if you invest in yourself. I can't help people that have unrealistic expectations. Expectations. I just can't. It's not possible. So if you come to me with some money in an account, then and you have the potential to make money, I can help you realise that goal. And as you've all seen with the FCA regulations, trading on margin is coming to an end, my friends. So it's going to get harder and harder for the small account trader to, to, to trade and exist. So this is why I say you wouldn't start a business, no matter what it is, undercapitalized. Why would you start your trading career undercapitalized? You've got 500 quid in an account. You can watch my free webinars. That's it. That's all access you know you get to me. You come with five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty five, hundred thousand pounds, I can work with that. I can't work with people who are dreamers, get rich quick schemers. That isn't my style. If you're inv willing to invest in yourself, I will invest some time with you. And pound for pound you will not see a better offer on the internet than I'm giving you right now. It doesn't exist. Fantastic. Steve Ruffley from steveruffley.com, thank you very much indeed for your time. Um, thank you, and we'll hear from you again uh, next Thursday with any luck. Of course, Simon. I'll be here every Thursday for the foreseeable. Really looking forward to it. Okay, Cheers. many thanks for your time, and thank you everybody for joining us uh, on this webinar today. Uh, I'll take back the presenter role, and just to confirm, it has been recorded, so you'll have a second chance to review this uh, as we uh, get the recordings processed.
Okay, thank you. Thanks very much indeed.